9.1. In this section, we're going to be solving some more quadratic equations. So we're going to have equations with an x squared in them. And we're going to use a different approach. Instead of using factoring, we're going to go ahead and use something called the square root property. And that's a property you can use for a very specific kind of quadratic equation. Over here is the property. If you can get the equation into this format here, something squared equals a number, then you can find the solution using the square root property. By the square root property, that would mean that the something is equal to the root of k or the negative root of k. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that would work in number one. All right, I've got x squared equals 9. Well, the root of 9, the positive root of 9 is going to be 3. The negative root of 9 is going to be negative 3. And it does make sense that if I put in 3 and I square it, I do get 9. If I put in negative 3 and I square it, I also get 9. All right, so basically what, the way I like to think of these is when I have something squared equals a number, I like to square root both sides like that and then put a plus and minus in front of the right side where the number is. And then we're going to say the square root of x squared Remembering root and square cancel each other out, gives us x, and we get plus or minus root 9, which would be plus or minus 3. And that's um, what I find to be a nice quick way to come up with the answer. So let's try another one out. t squared equals 45. Well, if t squared equals 45, I go ahead and take the square root of both sides, and that's going to make the square cancel out and leave me with t but I need to do plus or minus the root of, four, of 45 to get post both possibilities there. So t equals plus or minus root 45, which is the same thing. It's not a perfect root, but it's the same thing as root of 9 times 5. And by the properties we studied about square roots in a previous module, this is going to be the same as plus or minus. We can take the square root of 9, which is 3, and pull it out and then keep the root 5 as the leftover. So that would be our final answer there. All right, and we are getting two solutions. So you can either write it as a plus or minus in front or positive 3 root 5, negative 3 root 5. All right, so you have to check and see which way my math lab wants you to write it. As far as you know, writing it out in a written format on a test, you could put either solution down. Um, it's good to get comfortable with this format because that's the format you're going to see later on in um, higher level math courses. One more here, z squared equals negative 1. Now if I square root both sides, it gives me z. But now I have square root of a negative number. And if you remember from the last module, that does not give us a real answer. So no real answer or solution. All right, so that one does not have a solution. Now let's do a couple more. All right, all the ones we just did, we had something squared equals a number. So right away, we were able to square root both sides. But if we don't have it in that format, what we're going to do is we're going to force that format to happen. All right, we're going to get the equation in the something squared equals a number format and then use the square root property. So for example, here we have w squared take away 7 equals 0. Well, I can't square root both sides because if I square root both sides right away, the um, square here will not cancel out because I've got the minus 7 connected with it. So what I'm going to do is add 7 to both sides. And that gives me w squared equals 7. Now I have something squared equals a number. And this something doesn't have to be just a w. It could be a binomial. You know, it could be a trinomial being squared. It could be a whole bunch of things. At this one, we go ahead, do our square root property with a plus minus, and it gives us w equals plus or minus root 7. And those are our two solutions there. And one more. 7x squared equals 5. So right now, we don't have something squared equals a number. We have 7 times something squared equals a number. So we need to make this 7 go away here. We don't want it 
attached to the squared item. Divide by 7 on both sides. x squared equals 5 over 7. And now we go ahead, square root both sides. Square root, plus or minus square root. That gives us x equals plus or minus root 5 over 7. And now there's something that we don't want to leave in a final answer. We don't want to leave a square root in the denominator. Because this thing right here is the same as plus or minus root 5 over root 7, because we can give that root to the numerator and denominator separately. We don't want to have a square root in a denominator, so what we're going to do is something called rationalize the denominator. And this is just something that's good for you to see. It's not something that you're going to see in a lot of questions. Denom Oops, I'm totally messing up that spelling. Let's try again. Denominator. There. Um, so I just want you to see this. You might see it in a couple questions, but that's about it. To rationalize the denominator, what you do is whatever is inside the root, you multiply by the same thing like that. Root 7 over root 7. Now on top, that's going to give us root 5 times root 7. And we still have the plus or minus, is root 35. And we would root it as far as possible if it was possible, but here it's not possible to do anything to it. Root 7 times root 7, well, that would be root 49, which is the same as 7. And that's the final answer. You want to put your answer into that format. Okay, no roots in denominators. And again, you're not going to see a lot of those, so don't worry about them. Just try it out and see how it goes.